Hello, you lovely sacks of protein. Nathan Rance here. The other day I was talking to my therapist and he said, Nathan, you need to be more positive in life. Well, in actuality, he said, Nathan, you're one cynical piece of shit. And then he spat at me. So I'm making it my goal to be a little bit more positive, you know, be a little bit more of a radiant ball of sunshine and a bit less of a c I mean, I recently did a video on the best trilogy of all time and all I could talk about was the worst scenes. And that's pretty awful considering the film has won so many awards like best costume design, best picture, best film trilogy in which has only 15 seconds of women talking to each other. Hey, back then this was considered progressive. The early 2000s were a different time. Women were kept in cages back then. So I wanna create some balance and talk more about the positives. So I present to you the best scenes in the Lord of the Rings. Now we have to start this list off with a really solid entry and that is Aragon's hair at the end of Return of the King. Did this guy just cross the entire world and win two major battles? Damned if I know, this bitch's hair's pristine. Oh, just look at that form. It is a perfect play by Jackson here. Pure cinematic genius. Let's talk about what this hair represents, okay? So as far as Aragon knows, he's a mortal smooth skin elf babe as Aragon from his life. Okay, and he's top tier sad about it. Sure, their conversations were about as depressing as a puppy with a terminal illness, but that was Aragorn's love language. That's what gets his attention. I mean, look at Eowyn, for instance. She cracked a smile and laughed at a few of his jokes and she was cast immediately into the fires of friendship. Aragorn does not f around, you know. You gotta twist his bolt and tell him his mother died to get his affections. Though to be fair to Eowyn, she does try and win him over by, by staring at him like a complete mentalist. And Aragorn gives mixed messages for sure. Like there was that time he, he, he tucked in Eowyn really gently with the blanket, which is weirdly intimate for a guy that's trying to create walls between them. And that's even after he eats her stew that tastes like shit. I can't believe they filmed this scene. Like what the f is this scene? I just had a thought, poor Faramir is destined for a life of shit stew, even after all he's been through. Oh, oh, oh God. I almost got burned alive for this shit. I showed my quality in everything. Oh, I wish it was me that got turned into an arrow pin cushion. So we're back at the keep. The battle's been won, Sauron's been defeated, and Aragorn, quite frankly, should be knee deep in Middle Earth Clunge. Obviously, he isn't ready for it. I mean, he couldn't go back to Eowyn for a quick pick me up because he's already getting off with Faramir. So what's Jackson telling us here? Well, usually when someone gets out of a long-term relationship, they drastically change their hair, you know, cut it short, maybe dye it blue. You know, you can't deny that, that's just science. It's a symbolism of rebirth, new hair, new me. Jackson is saying that Aragon wants to turn heads, you know, he wants to feel good about himself, but he just got out of something really serious and he's not ready to move on. He's feeling a little bit unsure about himself, which, and Jackson did all of this through the medium of hair. Oh, the depths of this film. And that's why this film won the best hair design award of 2003. Now we move on to a scene from the two towers and a lot of people uh, don't really understand what the two towers were, what the two towers represent. What are the two towers? Well, I can help you, my friend. You see, Tolkien was referring to worm tongues and Aragorn's engorged minus organs that they had over Eowyn. If you don't believe me, look it up. It's in Appendix D. He told you. So the scene I want to talk about is when a bunch of middle-aged mud men kidnap some hobbit children. Specifically when a crisis occurs because all they've been eating is maggot bread for three stinking days. And as we all know, a diet purely consisting of maggoty bread can completely ruin your complexion. Oh, doesn't this orc look like an old maths teacher who perpetually has coffee breath regardless of whether he's been drinking it or not? So like a bunch of horny Victorian era celibates, the more anemic looking orcs end up becoming obsessed with legs. I mean, these little spindly orcs are sluts for legs. At this point, they just want to marinate in hobbit legs but the white hands are having none of it, which is really surprising given their muscle mass. Like they have to ingest a lot of protein to maintain that glorious form compared to the insurance broker looking orcs. Oh sweet Jesus, what is that? No seriously, what is that? It looks like a deformed raisin. So the orc that looks like he'd enjoy modifying his Holden station wagon Commodore's uh, exhaust pipe to be as loud as possible in the hopes of finally getting his father's attention, 
decides that he'd rather die than go another day without hobbit legs. And his head is promptly removed from his body. And one of the greatest lines in cinematic history is said, Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. That would make a great tagline for Grinder. So the orcs begin consuming and we're immediately presented with the MVP of the show, the flying intestine. <laughs> now you have to truly appreciate this addition by Jackson because it does some of the most heavy lifting of storytelling in the entire trilogy. Don't believe me? If we take this flying intestine out of the scene, what do we have? We just have a bunch of orcs bobbing up and down. It looks like some kind of orc orgy. By adding this nonchalant throwing of an organ, this flying intestine, you get that visual feedback. They're not just chowing down on some orcs meat, but they're chowing down on orc meat. It also gives depth to the orcs. You know, it's saying, hey, I might be an orc. I might partake in the occasional cannibalism, but I have personal preferences, okay? I will not eat chitterling. Now that I think about it, while these orcs are really disgusting, cannibalistic, violent, sociopathic, half-witted, I would imagine they're much easier to live next to than my current neighbours. Although in saying that, I think that's them at the back of the orc pack. Alright, time for the best scene, you little parasites. Aragorn breaking his goddamn toe. Aragorn kicking that orc helmet is a priceless scene, not just because of the artistic choice, but because it allows me to show everyone that I have personality. Let me explain, all right? I'll invite people over in what seems like an innocent movie night. I'll suggest a film trilogy. Hey, why don't we watch The Matrix? I suggest that because I know what they'll say. Oh, I like the first one, but I don't know. Got a bit ridiculous by the end allows me to come back with the most perfect response. Oh, true. What about the Lord of the Rings trilogy? That's always a good choice. <laughs> and they will reluctantly agree because it is my home and I hold authority over them. Yeah, okay. And so all is going well. We're watching the Fellowship. It comes to an end and then we begin the Two Towers. And then we finally get to the scene when our three heroes are surrounded by Carl Urban's crew. The moment is approaching. The glorious pile of burnt orcs appears. Aragorn, torn by anger, looks for the nearest object to inflict his frustration upon. Ah! And I can't hold it in any longer. Figaro Mortison actually broke his toe when kicking that helmet and that scream is his real scream, but they kept it in because it's so good. And thus by telling that fact, I have proved my worth as a person. And in the event I haven't been able to coerce anyone back home, I can always go to my nearest online forum and write yet another post about this, thus staving off that desperate, terrible, dark, horrible feeling I have in the pit of my stomach just for the next two hours. Wow, what a list. But that's not all. Here are some bonus scenes that didn't make the list, but they're still pretty good, such as Galadriel being unnecessarily creepy to Frodo for absolutely no reason. Half-transformed Gollum looking like an unfortunate meth-addicted child of Jim Carrey's Grinch. Grond. Orcs start a race war over a t-shirt. Orcs can't gut a hobbit without horning a blade menacingly and saying a little dialogue about how they're going to gut them. And lastly, Frodo and Sam looking especially f***ed up like they're made of wax during the Council of Auron scene. Oh, disgusting! Haha, <laughs> I bet you all had some of those scenes in your favourite scenes from Lord of the Rings. But if, if, if those scenes weren't on that list, why don't you go ahead and keep it to yourself? Because I don't give a shit. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>